Welcome, this is the AP Phys Physics Workbook Solution. Here I'm covering one point C. This is on average versus instantaneous speed. Okay. A toy company claims to have developed two toy car models, which they call A and B, where the average speed of each car is identical, given that. Each group of students is given two toy cars, one of each model, a meter stick and a stopwatch, and asked to test the toy company's claim. Okay. The student decides that they need to collect distance and time data for each of the car test companies. The students design these procedures. Okay, you're going to cross out any steps that are useless, right? That's the extraneous and uh, reorder them. Okay, so right here is your list. You could try it now. Okay, so first of all, you can say that you could take out gathering equipment because they already um, say in the question that they gave you the uh, two toy cars, meter six, and the stopwatch. Okay? All right? Then you could also take out, draw a table in the notebook. Useless. Okay? The procedure is referred to as more as the collecting the data part. Okay? So, first thing that you need to do is you want to establish your distance. So, that means, right? Watch this. Do you see how that goes first? So, the first step is to measure a two meter long path for the floor. Okay. Second step, you're going to turn the car turn the car on and release from the measure path. There's no way you look at the second step it says measure path. There's no way this can be the first step if you don't measure it. Okay? Then after you measured it, okay? You can measure and record the time the car took to travel the 2 meter path using the stopwatch. Then lastly, you always want to make sure you do multiple trials, so repeat the trials to reduce the error. So these are the steps. This is step one, step two, step three, and step four. But I just show you in the animation of the correct order. Okay. On the free response, you're going to see a table always be given to you. Now here it says given um, is a data set collected by students in the class. Based on these data, what conclusion should the student make about the hypothesis that the two car A and B have the same speed? I already gave you the answer. I said that the car have different average speeds. Okay. Why is that? Let's take a look. That is how it looks like um, as it is currently. Okay, um, and if you draw the average speed, okay, the average speed is basically the slope here, and it should be right about, let's see, right here, right? I try to make it, uh, try to make it under it as best as I can at 4.9. Why? Do you see how this is up, 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 but this drops it down and it goes back up? Okay, same thing about this one, right? It's down, 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 but this pulls it back up. So the averages are the same if you took these two in consideration. What happens if I take those two data points out? It should look like this. So now I'm going to redo it. The average should something be like this, which can be roughly, what, 0 0.54. If you do this, it should have been roughly uh, 0 0.45, okay? So car A actually has a greater average speed than car B because there is the average speed are different when the outliers are removed. And I show it graphically on the left hand side, on the right hand side here on how it looks like um, when the outliers are removed, you should see the average speeds is greater for the red, okay, which is um, the car B, and on bottom, so um, is car A, which is in blue, right? So I really wanted to talk about this idea about instantaneous speed and um, instanta um, and the average speed, okay? So. There are two things that I want you to consider. When you take the slope of something, you are actually determining here the slope. You are actually determining the average. Okay. When you take the slope of something, you are taking the average. Why is that? Because there, these two 
has a um, do you see how these two have a gap there's a gap here right and the gap can change right so there are multiple points in here okay what you can do is you can reduce it okay so what they mean is by reducing the two tangent lines so if you write this into its proper notation it should look like this delta y over delta t this is the calc explanation for why is it called instantaneous the gap between these two points is a large gap right but if you really want to know how much it's changing, you reduce that gap. So you're going to slide these two points all the way closer to each other. So imagine as these two points come closer and closer together, the gap decreases. The gap will decrease. That is what this limit means as t approaches zero. The gap will decrease so much that the point is right on top of each other to the point that you could call it instantaneously. Okay, so instantaneously is referred to as when the gap between two points is almost zero and you could figure out the slope. But if you have a gap between the two points and there are other things that can happen in between, it would be considered an average. Okay, so slope is technically an average of something. Okay. So uh, most of the time you're going to be calculating average speed, average um, acceleration. Okay, instantaneously only occurs if you do it at that exact moment, and the distance between the two points are almost zero. Okay, so here is the experiment to design. Okay, the student decides that. Uh, additionally, they want to test the toy company's claim that the car's speed is constant through the motion. How, if at all, does the experiment procedure from part A need to be modified to verify the car's instantaneous speed? Okay, so I wrote here, Angelica thinks that they should use a motion sensor to collect the speed versus time data. Okay, let's see why she's right. I said Angelica's method is correct. Because Angelica is looking at the slope of the graph using different data points. Blake's method only collects the start and the end, right? And when you only get the start and the end, it's considered the average because you're not taking to consider what happens in the middle, okay? So I wanted you to understand that average acceleration, um, average is different from instantaneous instantaneous can be calculated if you have multiple several points and they're very close together so angelica's method of thinking that if she uses a motion sensor to collect the time versus speed data and if she sees a slope of zero right she sees a slope of zero the intensity speed is constant because all those points are closest together okay so there you go. Um, that's it. Those are all your solutions for 1C.